Hey everybody, what's going on? It's that time of the year again. All the phones are coming out. Now you just saw our iPhone 11 Pro Max review. Guess what? The most leaked phone in the history of all phones was released shortly after we did that review. It's in my hands right now. Here are my thoughts on the Google Pixel 4 XL, also known as the Google Pixel 3 Mark II. Anyway, let's talk about the Google, uh, Google Pixel 4 XL. The Google Pixel 4 comes in two variants, the 4 and the 4 XL, one smaller than the other. Makes sense, right? That's why they use XL. Mm. Even that car agrees. So let's talk about the design of the Pixel 4 XL. Now, besides the square housing on the back that looks like the iPhone 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, they've done some cool things to this phone. First off, they've given you a matte texture to the bezel of this, which I actually like because, and this is something I, I forgot to mention in my iPhone review, but I did find out after using it naked for a while, is that that stainless steel bezel, which is very slippery, it's very hard to hold a phone securely if you're like in bed or watching movies or just want to hold in your hand. But this textured bezel actually feels really good in the hands. Now it comes in various different colors. Most of them have that matte texture on the back of it. We got that glossy black, which is a fingerprint magnet, but you always can get a D brand skin or another skin to put on the back of it to sort of give it that textured feel. Now, in terms of the front of the phone, this is where things get different because no longer do they have that dual speaker system that they had on the previous pixels. No, Google, so we don't need that anymore. We have radar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a forehead and the speaker is just there like a normal phone and then a speaker at the bottom of the phone. So gone is the dual front-facing speakers, which I do miss a little bit. But you know, there have been a lot of reviewers out there complaining about this forehead on the phone. And I thought, how biased are they? You know, when I see someone with a bigger forehead I don't like, you got a big forehead, I don't wanna to talk to you. Like, we all got big, some people got bigger foreheads than others. Can't be, you can't discriminate. It's all about love in this country. Love, peace, and harmony. You got a big forehead, it's all good, and I'm okay with the big forehead on this. It's all good. Pixel, you unlock like that, you got a great forehead. You're still attractive to me. So let's talk about the insides of this phone. We got a Snapdragon 855 processor. That's pretty much the same as we've been seeing from majority of phones the entire year. For those who are hoping for the 855 Plus, nope, Google said, we don't want to spend that much. We want to keep it the same. Anyway, is it, a, is it a deal breaker? No, it still performs great. It's fast, it's fluid, no issues at all. Six gigabytes of RAM, you got up to 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. And of course, with Google Drive, you can have unlimited storage by Google. Just pay them more and more money. You don't even need an SD card. What else? You got a QHD display, 6.3 inch display, beautiful OLED display, great colors. It looks vibrant, it's fantastic. Love the display in this, no issues at all. And the display goes up to 90 hertz now. Yes, finally, someone besides OnePlus and Asus have decided to push that megahertz a little bit more in the screen refresh rate, and it works beautifully. So besides that, we're not here to talk about the specs of the phone. We all know what it is. We're here to talk about the camera. The Google Pixel cameras are legendary. They have been revered by photographers around the world. Annie Leibovitz, she's thrown all her Hasselblads away and uses Google Pixel. No, she didn't, but she's kind of sponsoring or kind of promoting the cameras. Anyway, you got two cameras this time on the back of it, a 16 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel standard wide angle lens. Now, why didn't they do that in reverse? I don't know. Usually you would think 16 would be the standard and 12 would be the telephoto, but Google said, no, we want to do things differently. So yeah, girls, don't come on by. Don't worry, it's okay. That's what happens when you shoot live. People are afraid to come in your shot. Very respectful, you like that? Some people just walk right in front of me and hit me. These ladies, they stopped and waited for me to talk about the Google Pixel. Anyway, some cool new tech to this is you've got a radar system on the front of this phone and it helps in a variety of different ways. First off, if you want to like leave the phone on your table and then wave your hand over it, the phone awakens. Then you pick it up and the new face unlock just opens up right away. You feel like kind of like a Jedi doing this thing. It's kind of cool. Just phone turns on, pick up, you're using it. The face unlock on this works really well. I gotta give Google credit on this. They've done a fantastic job. Now I'm hearing it's much more secure than the other Android variants out there. I, like I say in other reviews, I'm not some secret agent. I don't care. No one's gonna take a picture of me and put it in front of my phone to unlock it. I don't have anything to hide. They say it's good, it's good anyway. It's fast and it's reliable. I like it. Besides that though, using the phone day to day, it works well. The battery life on this is not gonna be the greatest. It's under 4,000 milliamp. I think it's around 35 or 3,700 milliamps for the battery on this. Once you push the 90 hertz refresh rate on this, your battery's gonna drain. You can take a lot of photos and stuff like that. 
you might get through a day. You're not gonna get a day and a half, no, unless you're really a light user. But a solid day, yes. You got some pretty quick charging on this. You got wireless charging on that aspect, so you're good to go. But this is not going to be the battery king in the Android universe. It's not. And that's sort of where Google, they could have improved it. They could have put a bigger battery in this. I mean, so many other Android phones are doing it, relatively the same size as the Pixel 4 XL. Why they didn't do it, I have no idea. But anyway, that's what it is. But anyway, moving to the front, we have an 8 megapixel selfie camera. Now you still have that revered image quality that we loved about the Google Pixel 3 and the 3XL. It is still in this camera. It looks beautiful, looks great. You got night sight in it, and night sight's fantastic. It works just as good as last year's, even slightly even better, because now you can do astrophotography and all that kind of stuff if you actually have the ability to do it. Now in Singapore, we have a lot of light pollution, so it's kind of hard to do astrophotography, but I'll take Google's word for it that you can take pictures of the stars if you're in the deep wilderness or in the mountainous regions of the world, different parts of the world, you can take astrophotography. Quite cool, right? Now besides image quality, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Why did Google choose a telephoto lens and a wide angle lens instead of an ultra wide angle that everybody is getting into these days? And I thought that same question, but you know, after thinking about it for a while, I thought, wait a second, Google has all this data they're collecting from Google Photos and various different apps that they have. Maybe they know something that we don't. Maybe they know the ultra wide could be a fad, a one year fad or two year fad, and then after that, everybody's going to telephoto. That'll be the new thing. Maybe they're ahead of the curve. But you know what? It's okay, because Google, if they're smart with this, they have the perfect tagline. If you want ultra wide angle, all you need to do is move wide angle. See, Google's making us work for our shots instead of having everything on the phone. Smarter than Just move. Go forward and move. Think about it. Let's talk about image quality on the Pixel 4 XL. Now, the reason that we call it here the Pixel 3 XL Mark II is because there's not a lot of difference, except you have that telephoto zoom lens and there's no like on you know like on the iPhone or other you know cameras out there where you can actually tap to go to that respective camera angle you can't so it can be a little bit confusing you just have to kind of pinch to zoom and you hope you're not in digital zoom you hope you're in you're in you know optical zoom you kind of don't really know um, so Google could have improved that a little bit but I mean image quality is good you've got that contrasty look that Google has so their images a little bit more cooler than the iPhone and some people will like it or they don't. I don't mind it actually, it's pretty good. It's really great detail, but you can tell there's a lot of processing going on in the camera in terms of the images. Video, it's not Google's forte yet. They need to work on video a little bit more. If you want a camera for video, just go to the iPhone or go to another Android camera out there, maybe a Samsung S10 or the Note 10 Plus. All right, recording some test footage with the Google uh, Pixel 4 XL. I'm not using the selfie camera, I actually reversed it to see how good this camera is. It's not gonna be the videographer's uh, wet dream, but it won't be so bad either. I think this will get the, you'll get the job done for your Insta stories and your Instagram content. If you wanna do some cinematography, you gotta look elsewhere. But, if you just want some daily video, it'll do the job. The Pixel 4 XL is not going to be a fantastic video camera. It will do video, but if you are gonna mainly shoot video with this thing, this isn't, the, this isn't the phone for you. But besides that, I mean, overall, thoughts on it. This was the most leaked phone I think we've ever heard of in terms of phone leaks. And you could see the Google, every time there was an announcement of another phone, they were dropping a leak of the, of the Pixel 4 XL. And it got to a point where it became a joke. And you know what, I always, I equate it to this. Whenever you see a movie trailer that shows you the entire movie in the movie trailer, you know that movie is not really gonna be that great. And that's kind of the Pixel 4 XL. It's a good phone, has Great imaging, but it's just kind of there. And minus the radar features, it's really not much of an update to the Pixel 3 XL. That's why we're gonna call it here. Instead of the Pixel 4, no. This is the Pixel 3 XL Mark II. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Pixel 3 XL Mark II. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Until the next one, take care.